Live, the show that airs right here daily at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I want you to know about. Now, to, before I introduce today's guest, who is not only a medical doctor, she's also beautiful and smart, and she's going to cook. I want to tell you a little bit about the fact that this is her third time on the show, and I think it's her appearance on the show that really helped create this as a show. For those of you that don't know, I started going live on March 20th, which was the first day that our governor told us to shelter in place to create a sense of community and connection with my community. But being new to the technology I'm using, I pushed the wrong button. I ended up going live everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, and all of my private groups, and people seem to appreciate it and watch. I got a little tired of hearing myself talk, so I asked friends to come on the show. And Dr. Nikki Davis was actually one of the first ones. She came on twice, actually, two days in a row when things were at the height of uncertainty. Even after a full day's work, she was uh, interning at True North. And it was like, I remember we did it at like 10 o'clock one night. So, you know, if, if she hadn't really done that, I don't know if I would have had the wherewithal to like reach out to all my doctor friends and create the show we have now. And actually we're booked to about January 9th of next year. So thank you so much, Dr. Nikki Davis for doing that. And welcome to the show with your beautiful family. Thank you. Hello. So, thank you. so I'm Nikki Davis. This is my son, Augie Davis. He's going to be helping us out today. And then my wonderful husband, John Davis. Oh, what a good looking family. <laughs> so we're excited to be on the show and AJ it was so much fun to do those interviews with you early on when I was at True North and I'm just glad that it kind of sparked something that we could continue so I'm glad to be back on again absolutely so you think uh, your, your family looks very healthy and they eat plants right yes in fact um we've been plant-based I've been plant-based for most of my life. I would say probably 25-ish years now. Um, my husband went plant-based when we, like, shortly after we met. Uh, so that's been how long now? 13 years. 13 years. And then Augie has been plant-based since birth. So that's yes. incredible. Love how old? How old? Is, I love his name, by the way. I love your name, Augie. How old is, are you, Augie? Uh, seven. Wow. Yeah, we met when you were four. Of course, you can't remember. I don't remember anything when I was four either. But oh, uh, yes, <laughs> I. It's probably a lot harder. <laughs> a lot harder. Do Do you like eating? Do you like the way you eat, Augie? Yeah, that's neat. Do, do, do you go to school, Augie? I mean, I mean, I know not probably right now, but in. Uh, when we're not having a pandemic, do, do yeah. You go, yeah. So, do you find that you eat differently than your friends, or do some of your friends eat like you? Um, some. Well, my friend Oscar, like two blocks away, he was vegan for like a how long? Like six months, I think. Six months. But that, maybe that was because you were talking to him about it. You know, every little bit helps, huh? Like it's school, do they, 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 at that age, are they still giving them uh, like snacks and nutrition breaks where they're, you know, I remember when I went to school, like they always gave you milk at a certain point, like you, you had to take it. Right. Well, so he's been homeschooled, so he hasn't had to deal with that kind of stuff, but well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, so should we get started? Absolutely. Okay, uh, so I see you have a, it looks like you have a Breville air fryer behind you. Yes. I love this thing. We use it all the time making french fries, oil-free french fries, so we love it. Um, oh, that's our... You know, maybe oh. tell people also, because you also are a doctor, maybe tell people what kind of doctor you are and, and where you work and what, you, what you're up oh, to yeah. as well, because they may not remember you from the first two times you were on. Yeah, so, um, so I just actually graduated from my family medicine residency in Montana. So I went to the University of Utah School of Medicine and then went to do... Uh, family medicine residency. So I'm almost board certified in family medicine. Um, basically I've done all the requirements and taken the exam and it just needs to be finalized. So, um, but yeah, so I'm not planning on working in like a typical clinic and I kind of do my own thing where I'll probably do some telemedicine. And then uh, AJ, you and I had talked about, uh, you know, I'm really interested in doing kind of McDougal-like live-in retreats, so 10-day live-in programs. So that's what I'm hoping to do. I had looked into doing one, my first one later this year, but I don't think that's gonna happen due to the virus. So 
we'll kind of see if 2021 is going to be the time that we start doing that. So did you, uh, did you do an internship at McDougal? I know you did one at True North. I did. Yeah. In 2016, when I was in medical school, I was able to work with Dr. McDougal before he retired. So that was amazing. That was a, an amazing opportunity. And then I got to do True North uh, this, just this past March. Nice. Well, that, that's fantastic. Yeah. Squeezed it in right before the virus yeah. got really bad. <laughs> People are commenting they like John's t-shirt. Where did you get it? Well, you'll have to ask Nick if you got it for him. <laughs> of course I bought it for him. He bought mine too. It's funny. Um, I don't remember. That might have just been an Amazon thing. Nice. So, all right. Well, so we're going to make um, some spiralized hash browns. We love making hash browns. It's probably one of the things we make the most for our breakfast as a family, something really easy to make. Sometimes we'll use just frozen and other times we'll do fresh potatoes, which is my favorite. So that's kind of special occasion, we'll make fresh potatoes. And then the way that I started doing spiralized was actually um, based on a recipe that Kathy Fisher does. So that was kind of like, wow, these are so good, spiralized. Um, and then just kind of my own little twist on it. So we'll make those today. And then Augie's going to help me make a smoothie that he really likes for the morning too. Oh, cool. yeah. nice. So we're going to start by just kind of peeling our potatoes. Okay. You know how to do oh, yeah, I am. Was, was John plant-based when you met him or did you have to, did you have to turn him? You want to tell the story, John? Um, no, I was a full-on meat eater when we first met. And then I slowly started to transition from vegetarian and then, and then to vegan. Very nice. Well, you look very, very strong. It's not like you, it turns you into a weakling or anything. Yeah, I'm tired and fatigued and all the time. It's tough to lift heavy objects. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's got to drive the humor. <laughs> And he, um, he really fixed the pipe, which took like four days. Here, I'm going to let you work on the spiralizer. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 This is one that uh, Jonathan found, and it's, it's let's see, it's called Bron, B R O N, Kook, C O U C K E. It's made in France. And John, why is it that you chose this one specifically? Um, there was a there was a restaurant here in town that was called I think it's still around. It was called Omar's Bratopia, and they were pretty much an all raw eatery. And they use this one and, and commented about it being one of the best ones out there. So, Ooh, so I uh, bought that one. Nice. And AJ, I've actually got a store on my website where I have a link to a lot of the oh, things that I use in my kitchen. So I don't have this exact spiralizer on there, but it's something very similar. Um, so everything that I'm using today, I have uh, a link to something on my on my website nice thanks I'll, I'll put the link to the website it's her name guys dr nikki davis.com all right that one's looking good how do you yeah oh, okay. so i'm going to show you augie and then you can you can finish it up here so we're just going to stick it on here and then slide it forward yep and then you're just going to spin it and you have to kind of push hard. There you go. What is this gonna do? Well, if you look on the other side, you can see that it's making little. What? <laughs> it's kind of squeaky. It is a little squeaky. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Ann Ann says, "Is that the Rotopia in Salt Lake?" Uh, it is, yeah. We, we, yes, you're correct. Very good. Although I, we stopped going to that place because they actually started serving meat there. So, yeah. 
I'm wondering if you could, you know, it's hard for us to see what you're doing so far away. I'm wondering if it could be moved somewhere a little bit closer. Yeah, I can show you. Thanks. The other thing I like about this one is it's got little suction cups on the bottom. I don't know if other ones do, but it makes a lot Oh, that easier. looks amazing now. Wow, thank you. All right. Why don't you put in another one? All right. Back. Whoa, what is that thing? It's the heart of the potato. All right, there we go. Now, that looks like a really good quality one. Right. Yeah, we really like it. That's cool, and it looks easy to use. I have a I have a plastic it one. This looks so much better. You just really just twist it, and it works. That is so cool. Oh, and while we're talking, I'm going to make sure that we're heating up our. So what I'm going to do? So I I do it a couple of different ways, where I'll either use my panini press which I really like how those turn out with the panini press or um, on just a pan. So just like a large uh, fry pan. Whatever, you love those things, man. So today we'll do, we'll try it with the, the panini press. And we'll see how we do. So I've got it heating up here. You need so a don't fork to do this. And I'll just show you the, the one that I use. Let's see if you can see that. Have you ever spiralized beets or butternut squash? Or sweet potatoes? Yeah, we have. Yeah, in fact, Augie really likes beets. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh. Ready for another one? Honey says, a beautiful child. That's what eating plants can do. Okay. Oh, Judy says she doesn't have a spiralizer. Can she just use a shredder? I mean, she could, but it wouldn't be spiralized then. It would be yeah, shredded. So I Yep, I've done it both ways. So I've done shredded before too, and and you could definitely do that, and you could do it on the panini press as well with shredded. But there's just something about the spiralized that makes it a little bit thinner, and I don't know. Um, I think maybe it gets a little bit crispier that way. But we really like the spiralizer. But yeah, yeah I, you, you could do it both ways, and you, you, you know, these spiralizers are not that expensive actually. I think on Amazon, they're about $30, 20 or $30. Yeah, no, they, they are great. And you can use, you can do zucchini and, and all kinds of things. Yep. Have you ever right. tried it in a waffle maker, honey wants to know? Ooh. Yeah, you know, we don't own a waffle maker, but that is something that I've always wanted to try. Yeah. It's the heart, it's just the center. You know, leave any potatoes behind, buddy. Oh, I won't. <laughs> this is like a noodle potato dip. Yeah, yeah. they're kind of like noodles. I don't know if you're going to want to eat that raw. Should I try? You no. shouldn't eat raw potatoes, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. All right, you ready to crack another one, dude? Let's do one more. I think we're probably good. I think we've made it. How do you do that? Spin the big wheel. There you go. Nice. This is making a lot of potatoes. So AJ, I was talking to Augie the other day and telling him how down the road I'm going to be, you know, helping people learn how to eat vegan. And he said that he wants, while I'm teaching the adults how to eat vegan, he wants to teach the kids how to eat vegan. That'd be amazing. He could maybe start his own YouTube channel. Right? Yep. Uh, Samantha says, can you use frozen hash browns? Uh, I don't see why not. Oh yeah, you can. Um, I think that, you know, that definitely would be a lot faster. Uh, but I think that the, the difference in taste using fresh potatoes is kind of special, so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let me use the fork to do this. And it's, the spiralizer is so much easier than the grater, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Can't cut yourself on the spiralizer. Oh, Julie wants to know if you do you leave the peel on? Julie wants to know when you spiralize. So we haven't been. We peel it, um, but certainly I think you probably could. Um, yeah, we just we just choose to peel it. It's just it seems like they brown up a little bit better. 
but we've definitely we've done uh where we've uh just shredded them and left the peels on before just for added nutrition yeah this is a lot of noodles potato noodles <laughs> so we're also going to um, cut up a few things just to put on top. So some of the things that we will put on top are things like um, black beans, tomatoes, avocado, and mm -hmm. we try not to do salt. So we use either ground sumac berries or like onion and garlic sprinkle. And I actually have some that I got when I was at True North. So the savory spice shop, I'm sure you're aware of. But this one's the ground sumac berries. So we'll put that on top. What, what does sumac taste like? It's kind of a like a tangy lemony flavor, but it's it gives you kind of that same sense of what salt does, or it's kind of this tang. Nice. So it's a nice alternative. And then we also use this one too. Yeah, the, that's really good. The sprinkle. I've had that uh -huh. one. It's fantastic. Hey, so Rachel says in a few years, I would like to start a true North branch here in Utah. I could do this with Nikki. I will reach out to her and tell her I saw her here. I love that idea. This is all of our noodles. All right. Yep. There they are. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to pat them dry a little bit to kind of help them brown a little bit better. So, yeah, thank you. Those are good suction cups, somebody. <laughs> yeah. All right, Augie. Oh, you want to see our dog, Moose? Absolutely. I would love to see your dog. So, Augie, leave it here. Bring bring Moose over. Hey, but he's still in the little career, I'm sure. Nick, do you want me to just have anything else? Some tomato or some... Um, yeah, actually, do you mind grabbing? We don't have tomato, but we have avocado and red onion that we could cut up. And then, Augie, would you mind grabbing me a paper towel from under here? And then that way we can dry off our potatoes a little bit. I have to ring the bell now. I'm ringing it very softly because somebody complained that it was too jarring. So thank you, Mary Davidson, uh, for donating to the Super Chat. I really appreciate it. She says, thank you, Chef AJ, for all you do, helping spread the word and lead by example. Why do you think so many doctors are so apt to deny the health benefits of low-fat vegan? I'm going to add, I'm going to ask Nikki to answer that, or excuse me, Dr. Davis, to answer that, uh, and then maybe I'll weigh in after I hear her. So, Dr. Davis, why do you think so many doctors, are, do, do, I, I don't know so much that they, do they deny it, or do they just not tell anybody about it? Or maybe they don't know. Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit of everything. Um, I think that it's, you know, I kind of equate it to smoking where, you know, all doctors would say now that smoking is not a good idea, but, you know, back before the Surgeon General said that it was a bad idea, that it could cause cancer, you know, doctors were smoking and they were recommending to their patients the types of cigarettes that were better than others. They just didn't know. So I think that we're in a place where you know, the research is out there and it shows very clearly that, um, you know, eating this way is beneficial for so many reasons, oh, but I nice. think that it's hard because doctors themselves, oh, here's Moose. <laughs> this is oh, our what a cutie. He's 16. So, but I think that doctors themselves eat that way. And so it's hard for them to recommend changing a diet when they themselves don't eat that way. So I think it's a matter of, you know, just, you know, the doctors who do know, um, you know, getting to the point where, you know, we're going out there and we're teaching medical students and we're teaching other doctors and things like that. So I think we just need to get the word out and continue to spread the message until it becomes more um, normalized. Thank you. So I gonna, think that, I think a lot of doctors, they they don't know like you say and when sometimes they do but they don't want to change their eating and so how can they like tell their patients to, to do something if they're not doing it right right yeah we have a doctor watching daryl wardrop and he says most patients don't want to hear it <laughs> that's true you know but i what i found is you never know who it does want to hear it or you know even just one thing that you say to someone could be all the difference and, you know, I try to give that information to every single patient that I see, even if I don't think it's somebody who would necessarily listen or, or do it, because I know that 
even if it's five years from now, they might think back and, you know, oh gosh, I really should have done that. And maybe I'll try it now. So I think just sharing that information with everyone you come across, you just never know where it's going to stick. So I think it's worth talking to everybody about. Absolutely. People want to know if Moose is vegan. <laughs> he is. Yes, he is. He eats a uh, V-dog. Nice. Well, I believe Linda Middlesworth is watching. So Linda, you got another customer watching. All right. So now I'm going to just show you what I've got going here. So that's, so it's a Krups uh, Panini Press. So I'm just going to put some of these on here. And I apologize if it's a little bit shaky. I'm going to do my best here. Yeah, that's the same one I have, the Krups. There's a oh, question. It is? Yeah. What's around her neck? Are you wearing something around your neck? Oh, I just a necklace. Okay. Yeah. But I can show it to you. I got it in Montana. So that's probably enough. Necklace. Okay. All right. So there we go. So that's about how much we'll do. We don't want it to be too, too thick. And then we're going to cover it up. Wait. I got more noodles. I got I know we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that, Augie, so that we can cook it really nice. So we're gonna let that start cooking, and then Augie and I are gonna start working on a little smoothie here as well. Um, are you able to do telemedicine yet? And Linda says thank you for using V Dog. Uh, you know, um, I haven't started doing telemedicine yet, but I'm looking at a, a couple of different companies. There's actually a new one that I found about on your show. Uh, the plant-based telehealth that I'm hoping, um, you know, maybe sometime this fall I could get involved with. So that would be great. Have you contacted them? Like, so do they, I can introduce you if you don't know them. Um, I did, I contacted them and um, they've gone through their first round of hiring doctors and they're gonna be looking at um, taking on a few more um, this fall. So that's where we're gonna kind of touch base again once I'm all licensed and certified and see if it's a good fit. That's nice. Jennifer says, do you own an air fryer? Yes, they do. Cause I see the Breville. Have you okay. ever done spiralized hash browns in, in the Breville? Uh, so actually we have not tried that. And that is something that I would like to try. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. In fact, we've got a few extras here that we might try to do that. All right, so Augie's getting all the ingredients for our smoothie. So, so as far as uh, our smoothie goes, we're going to be using uh, a Blendtec blender. That's the one that we've had for years and years. Um, I know a lot of people will get either the Blendtec or the Vitamix. We got the Blendtec because it's made in Utah, just local, and we really like it. So we're going to get that all put in. Everyone loves Augie's hair and that he's so helpful in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was one of those things where uh, when he was little, you know, just said, I don't want to cut it unless he wants me to. So we let him decide and Augie's decided he really likes, oh yeah, here's you. So this is uh, one of the things, so we get Mama Says and uh, one of the things that comes in, I think it's your bundle, AJ. Uh, but it comes with these strong heartbeats. It's got beets and lemon and chia seeds. And so when we do have this, we'll add it to our smoothie. So we're going to do that today. Let me see if I can pull up the link for my bundle on Mama Says. I'll have to yeah, have them. It's the, it's the SOS. I think it's the always prepared. SOS. Right. You're right. I'm going to put a link. You guys, if you don't know about Mama Says, we had the chef on recently and she made a recipe. She'll be coming on again, Chef Caroline. But if you don't, have the time to prepare healthy food or you're traveling or you just need a little help, you can get an SOS free Chef AJ approved bundle. I just click the link. And yeah, and those strong, those strong heart beats are delicious. They are really good. We've used them to make a uh, banana ice cream too, where we mix it in and it makes it kind of a pink, pink color and it tastes yummy. Augie said it's the best ice cream he's ever had. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. But, um, but yeah, so Augie loves his long hair, don't you? He wants to grow it to it to uh, to the ground. He says. No, I don't want that. I want Not anymore. To keep it like here with this blue. Oh, he wants to make it blue now. But so. he, that's so funny. He has such a be beautiful blonde. Isn't it funny how people always want a different color? Because his hair is gorgeous. That color. Oh, it's the most beautiful hair ever. People pay a lot of money for that hair. All right, so we're gonna start making our smoothie with Augie here. So 
Um, Augie, why don't you grab some greens out of the fridge? So we're going to choose some greens to add. So they're over here. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's show them what we're going to use. So this is, this actually came with my mom's dump bundle this week. It's uh, baby kale. Nice. So, so, and we're going to actually, so Augie did something that we're not going to do, which is we're not going to put our frozen bananas in just quite yet. So the best way to make a smoothie is to add your fresh stuff first. So we're going to do our greens at the bottom first. It just blends up a lot easier if you've got your frozen on top. So all right, Augie, why don't you grab a handful of that? And you're going to put that right in. Yep, perfect. So the next one we're going to do is actually going to do these pieces. Yeah. Now, this one mom's going to do because they stain. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep. So we're just gonna add just a little smudge of that. And so the recipe does not have this on there, but we just happen to have that this week. So we're gonna add that. Okay. Uh yeah, go ahead, Ollie. So he just put in is that one banana? Yeah. Okay, so he just put in one banana. So we're gonna add um maybe you could do probably another half of banana on you. And then the other thing that we'll add is uh, sometimes if we have some fresh fruit that needs to be used, we'll just add that too. So just one half of it. So that's the whole one. So we're going to try not to do too much banana in there yet. So Augie, we grab a peach that's in the fridge. Oh, it's yeah. In the, it's in the drawer. So we got some fresh uh, local peaches and we, we've got a couple of those. So we're going to add one of those in here. Um, Dr. Davis, we have yeah. a question for you and a question from Augie. I'll just ask them in the order. They were asked first from Amanda, who says she is a family doctor in the Niagara region in Ontario, Canada. Any tips on how to bring it to our medical school system? Also, is plant-based telehealth uh, to Canadian physicians and residents as well? I believe they're all over the world. I think I asked Dr. Marbus, and I think they can do consults everywhere, but I'll have you answer the first question. Okay, so the first question was regarding um, how to get uh, good meals into schools. Uh, like plant -based no, plant -based into, uh, medical uh, school system, medical uh, school system. Medical school. You know, I'm learning about some medical schools that, that actually teach culinary medicines and teach their, their, their doctors, future doctors, how to cook. There's a couple of them trying to get them on the show. Yeah, there are. In fact, is it Tulane, I think? Tulane has one. And then the, uh, there's a, the one that was featured in the film, uh, the, the film that Dr. Sarai Stanek did, uh, I'm trying to, uh, Code Blue, there, that medical school was also featured. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She says, so, I mean, bringing lifestyle medicine in the curriculum. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So, um, you know, I, um, I know that there, so there's the lifestyle medicine, the College of Lifestyle Medicine. You can be board certified in lifestyle medicine, something that I'm trying to do right now. Um, and I know that they do a residency pro, you know, residency program where you can um, bring lifestyle medicine to a residency. But as far as medical school, I don't know if they're going that route yet. I'd have to kind of look into it a little bit to see. Um, and I know that one of the things, um, Dr. Clapper, so I would look up Dr. Clapper, but he's been doing a lot of teaching in medical schools um, with nutrition, lifestyle medicine type stuff. So, and um, Augie is adding um, some frozen organic berries. So I'll just show you what he just added here. So just got some raspberries and blackberries and blueberries. So just keep that in the freezer. So right now we've got um, some greens. We've got uh, the beets. We've got a peach that we cut up fresh peach and then frozen banana. We did about one and a half frozen bananas and then um, probably a little less than a cup of frozen berries. And then um, the last thing that we're gonna do is just add some oat milk. So that's kind of what we use as a family. And I'm gonna show you. So 
Um, so Audrey, if you want to grab the oatmeal from the fridge, I got next. And then it looks like our uh, hash browns are browning up nicely. So I'll show you, show you that as well. Nice. So um, I have a question from Augie from Louise. That Augie, Louise would like to know how old you are and what your favorite meal is. All right, Augie, somebody has a question for you. So they want to ask, they're asking you, how old are you? Um, seven. And what's your favorite meal? Uh, mac and cheese. So AJ, we make a, uh, what we call cheesy peasy. So we make a, a cheese sauce using cashews and it's um, something, it's a recipe that I found on, it's from a movie and it's a documentary. I think it's called Eating You Alive. Um, but it's got a really nice uh, powder that you can make using cashews and some other things. And so we'll make that for uh, kind of like a cheesy pasta for Agi. Nice. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to show you how these turned out. So these are our hash browns. Oh my God. That looks amazing. Right. So then what we'll do is we will put on top of this some little pieces of avocado. If we had black beans, I don't know if we have any black beans right now, but if we did, we would add some of those on there. Some cut up tomatoes and then some red onion. So that's kind of what we like to do and then the other thing you could add on there would be like some salsa some of your favorite salsa um and then of course those ground sumac berries that you know kind of give it that little tang so and augie's taking little tastes of this already <laughs> how does it taste Augie? Uh -huh. <laughs> it all right sounds, so, sounds delicious and then augie is adding some oat milk oh nice so we might need a little bit more than that so yeah, there's more in the fridge. Grab more. Yeah, Robin says she's getting hungry. Me too. This show is right before my lunchtime. So and the oat milk that we use, you have to be careful because uh, a lot of them come with oil in them. So you know, we try not to do oil in anything. Right. So this brand is Pacific, um, and it doesn't have any oil in it. So nice. L Linnea wanted to know how long did you have the potatoes in the panini maker? It didn't seem that long. No, it really, um, if you don't do it too thick um, in there, then, you know, it really only took about 10 minutes, if that. It was pretty quick. And I put it on, so it's got seven settings, and I put it on a five. So it's about medium, medium high heat. There's a, Dr. Davis, there's a question on B12, uh, if, if you feel like injections are better than supplements. Uh, no, not necessarily. We just do supplement. Um, in fact, at the clinic that I was working at, sorry about the loud in here, um, the clinic that I was working at, uh, we actually stopped doing injections unless it was for people who had severe deficiencies. Uh, so we do um, a B12 where it's just a the small, uh, sorry, the small uh, dose. So it's a 500 microgram and we don't take it every day. We just take it kind of when we remember. So it's probably a few times a month that will take it. And I remember when I was working with Dr. McDougall, I was asking him if I should have Augie start taking B12. And he said, well, does Augie play in the dirt? And I said, yes. And he says, well, he's getting plenty of B12. Because as we know, it's something that's made by bacteria and it's in the soil. And when we clean our veggies really well, uh, we strip that B12 off so we don't get it as much as we used to. So um, he still likes to eat it though, because it's cherry flavored. So he'll eat a B12 pill here and there. So we've been posting the recipe that you referred to for mac and cheese. Jody Lynn was kind enough to find it. I also oh, posted great. it. So for people that want to uh, do that, I, there's a question from Bill. How, how do I stay vegan and avoid all the yeast producing foods like potatoes, smoothies, and fruits? I feel like my diet isn't as balanced as it needs to be. I recommended talking to a plant-based doctor or an RD, you know, like a true north, but I don't know what that means by yeast producing foods. Yeah, you know, um, so the way that I tell people to eat is very basic. It's, you know, eating plants and trying to stick with starches as the main part of your meal to help with satiation. Um, so we do a lot of, uh, you know, potatoes and corn and beans and barley and quinoa and rice and things like that. And then adding on top of that for flavor, you know, veggies and fruits. 
And I try to help, you know, my patients just do it as simple as possible. So sometimes that just means, you know, some brown rice and steamed broccoli. Um, you know, for lunch all the time as a resident, it was sweet, you know, just a baked sweet potato with some steamed broccoli. So very simple, simple. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, if you're looking at, you know, something specific that you are not tolerating, then that's where, yeah, you'd want to talk to a specialist to kind of figure out what foods are going to work best for you. Terrific. All right. So mm -hmm. Augie has added the oat milk. Um, and we just, we basically add it up to where it's just barely at the top of all of our um, fruit that we've added in here. So we will close it up and we will blend that up. So oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, <laughs> no. This is my favorite part. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let Augie do the blending. He loves to push the button. All right, Augie, so just go ahead. Top of the Augie, do you want to push the button or you want me to do it? All right, I'm going to blend it up because he's busy doing something else. Oh, there you go. It's interesting that Zoom does that. I don't know how, how does it know? And it makes it not sound like that. If any of you are on the holistic holiday at home cruise this week, I hope you're having a great sail, even though you're not really sailing, but I hope you're sailing through the broadcasts. I'll, I'll get to your question in just one moment, Margie, because she, I don't know if she can hear me while she's blending. Okay, I just finished blending. So sorry, what were you Perfect. saying? Oh, and that's okay, because I think Zoom has a feature now that when it blends, we don't hear it as loud as you do. Oh, so yeah. that's great. And okay. uh, we have a question from Margie. Can too much B12 cause acne or skin breakouts? You know, I don't know about that. Um, I haven't heard that too much B12 can cause that. But certainly B12 is one that um, you store really well in your body. So you don't need very much of it. It's really that's why, hard. That's why I have it every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you don't really need to take it every single day. And, um, you know, it takes years and years for your body to be depleted of B12. Um, so I would say I would caution on the side of just not taking too much. Um, you know, I, I, you know, what you don't use, you will just um, excrete out of your body. It's, it's not like you're going to store up a bunch um, that you don't need. You just store up what you do need. So um, I just don't want to see people wasting their money by taking too much. Cause I know it, they sell it in like 5,000 micrograms and you just don't need that much. So we just do the 500 and I wish they actually sold it in less than that. But I think um, by taking it just a couple of times um, a, a month, then, you know, you don't, you don't uh, waste your money by taking it too much. So all right, so we're going to pour this into a cup now. So here's our smoothie. And I would say we do this most days with Augie. And, you know, it's just nice because now he's going to get his greens. He's going to get beets. Uh, he's going to get a lot of fruit in there, and he loves it. So, Augie, you want to come try it? Here's your smoothie, sweetie. You can say if it's good or not good. This is so good. That's amazing. I love seeing kids eat healthy. It is possible, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with Augie, this is what he's known. So, you know, he just doesn't know anything different. So John, you want to add some toppings onto that so we can show people kind of what it looks like. Yeah. So AJ, we're just going to grab the half pound that we made and we'll just kind of add some of the toppings on there so you can kind of see what it looks like before we eat it. Nice. I just eat the okay. Diane I says she has over 120 pounds to lose. So hard getting over the mindset of avoiding starches. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Shada, who I've had on several times. She that's exactly what I weigh, and that's exactly what she lost. And all she ate was starches. And I do have a, a group you can try for two weeks for free. I'm posting the link right here. And maybe we can help you overcome that fear because if, if, you know, what I say to people like Dr. Davis and people that are overweight, not eating starches, I'm saying, but you're overweight and you're not eating starches. So how can you blame the starches for you being overweight? Right. right. Yeah. That I think is one of the most difficult things um, people have to try to get over is the starch thing. Because honestly, when you go to the doctor, if they want to talk to you about anything nutrition, what I hear all the time is, you know, cut back on the carbs. 
because you know exactly. you're pre-diabetic or you have high blood pressure, you need to lose some weight, cut back on the carbs. And that's really not founded in any good science. Um, and I think it's just, you know, something that has, it's just been this myth that's been out there for so long that it's just something we believe, just like we believe, you know, all the commercials that say that you need to have dairy, um, you know, cow's milk to get calcium. So it's just a matter of kind of shifting that, that thinking. And, um, you know, I mean, my family, so all of us, you know, we all eat starches all the time. I mean, constantly you can ask any of the residents that I used to work with. What I would do is take, uh, the potato express. It's that red potato pocket. I've actually got a link on that on my website too, but basically I just throw a couple of raw potatoes into my bag with that. And I would just cook them in the microwave when I was at work. And so people were always seeing me just eating a plate of just potatoes. And so, and you know, I am able to stay very trim and healthy with just eating lots of starches. So I am not afraid of starches and you shouldn't be either. Right. It's not the starch. It's what they put on the starch, the yes. cheese, the butter, the oil, those kind of yep. things. It's okay. impossible to be fat eating starches. They're only one calorie a gram potatoes. It's not right. possible. Yeah. When you're talking about calorie density, that's huge. Yes. All right, so Jonathan has made us this lovely plate. Oh and it God. smells so good. So I, I tell you, like using oh. fresh potatoes to make hash browns, mm. just oh, so good. So what he did was he added some pinto beans and red onion and avocado. And then we'll probably add some of the sumac berries on there too. Uh, I'm guessing that I could give this to Augie, maybe without a, some of those onions and he would eat this whole plate. <laughs> so actually... I think I just want this. Yeah. And are you liking this? Um, All right. No, I just want the so on He's the doing side pretty good on that smoothie. It's so great seeing a family eat healthy together. So here's a question, Dr. Davis. What are the best foods for avoiding inflammation? Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about inflammatory foods, you know, some of the things that I think about are animal foods. So, um, and I don't know if this is coming from somebody who already doesn't eat animal foods, um, but basically, you know, if you're talking like dairy products, uh, number one, so dairy products, um, I think even meat products too, you'd want to avoid, um, you know, you could consider like if you have an inflammatory condition and you're already eating plant-based, you know, looking at whether or not there are some common triggered foods uh, for some people like soy and wheat and things like that. Uh, but ultimately, I would say that as long as you're getting rid of the dairy products and the meat products, and then um, even getting rid of things that kind of thicken up your blood, like oil. So oil is just bad news all around. Um, there's no really heart healthy oil. So um, getting rid of oils, too, I think is a good idea. Yep, absolutely. Somebody's asking if you should avoid soy if you have hypothyroidism. No, you don't need to. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's not something that you really need to do if you've got hypothyroid. Um, soy can be healthy part of your diet. I think, you know, if you can lean more towards the non-processed soy stuff. So just eating edamame if you want to. Just being aware that. Um, so one of Augie's favorite foods is tofu, but tofu is pretty high in fat. It's not very processed. Um, but for him, it doesn't matter. He can eat as much tofu as he wants and he won't gain, the, gain a pound. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so if you're going to eat soy products, just try to keep it minimal and processed if you can. Terrific. So what, what's, what, 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 do you, what do you eat in a day, Dr. Davis? What kind of, or, or maybe even what, what does everybody there eat in a day? So I would say, um, you know, what we made just now, this is our breakfast. So a lot of times we make hash browns and smoothies. That's, a lot of times that's what we eat. Um, if we're not doing that for breakfast, sometimes we will do what Augie calls the blue box cereal, which is the Ezekiel cereal. I think we've got a box in here. So this is his favorite cereal. <laughs> because this is all he knows. So um, he loves to eat this with just some oat milk on it and some sliced bananas. Um, you know, we'll do fruit a lot for breakfast too. So just berries and um, bananas. I eat a lot of bananas. Do you want pancakes for breakfast too, honey? Oh my. Oh yeah. So this is actually, um, you know, if you're looking, this is a little bit more processed. 
but this, um, if you can do wheat, this is a pancake mix um, that is oil-free and plant-based. So it's, you just add water to it. So that's a good option too, especially for kiddos. What, what do you cook it on? Do you have a griddle like or a, a scan pan? Um, yeah, so we use scan pan and we've got uh, one of those big, long, flat ones. I don't know if you have that one. Yeah. Uh, but we love the scan pan for a nonstick. Oh, and here's so we have Got a question again for you, Augie. Augie, do you get a homemade vegan birthday cake every year on your birthday? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, there's a bakery, too, that, will, that does, like, little specialty cakes and whatnot. Yeah, and, you know, one year we actually did, uh, have you seen those watermelon cakes? So you can slice a watermelon um, into a cylinder. And so I did a watermelon cake for him using just watermelon and then doing berries. And then I think we did like a coconut milk where we um, blended it up to make it into almost like a frosting. That's cool. Loved it. Here's oh. Moose. I'll show you, show you Moose. <laughs> He's adorable. So I'm, I'm guessing Augie is a kid. Well, I'm not guessing because he is a kid. So he doesn't have a formal exercise program. He just has to go outside and play. But what about the grownups? Do you guys do something every day? So Jonathan and Augie do karate together. So they love karate. Yeah. So I would say that's what Jonathan has done the most of to, you know, stay active. My favorite thing is walking and yoga. And then we also all do yoga together too. There's a really cool kids YouTube channel called Cosmic Kids Yoga that Augie loves. So they tell stories and they do yoga for kids through it. Is that something in person online? That sounds great. Yeah, it's just YouTube. So it's just videos that you can that you can find on YouTube. Is Moose somebody's asking what kind of dog Moose is? Is is he a silky? He's a he's a Yorkie. A Yorkie. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Argy, did you want avocado on yours too? Um, and I feel like there was something else that you had asked me about. Maybe I don't remember if we got. Let's see. Um, well, there, there's some questions on what do you do with tofu? And yeah. is oat milk, almond, oat milk versus almond milk is one healthier than the other? Um, you know, I mean, I think you can go, kind of go back and forth. We choose oat milk because it's low in fat and we like the way it tastes. Jonathan drinks coffee and he loves to make lattes. And so it froths up really well. So that's He's why he so likes addicted. it. <laughs> So that's just like our preference. We try to just keep everything kind of low fat and oat milk has been the one that we've enjoyed the taste of and is um, low fat. So we like that. <clears throat> oh, and then I was going to tell you, so the, for kind of what we eat in a day. So beyond breakfast, um, lunch, we kind of keep simple. Um, Augie will kind of do peanut butter and jelly sometimes, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, you know, for dinner, we like to do uh, quinoa a lot with, beans and veggies um we'll do brown rice with steamed veggies so cauliflower broccoli and then we really like to use the california balsamics so aj you introduced me to those right because so yeah, every guest on this show that lives in the united states gets two free bottles as a sample do you remember what you chose for your samples so i think i got the gilroy garlic and what was the other one? Oh, the teriyaki yeah. He has a new flavor coming out August 1st called Seven Herb Italian, and I'll be doing a video with it, making some uh, some marinated and grilled portobello mushrooms, but it's really, really good. I, I predicted it's going to be his bestseller, but just a moment. I hope that didn't bother anyone to thank Mary Davidson for using the super chat feature, which is just a little feature that you guys insisted I do if you want to donate. And Mary has a question for Dr. Davis. Can you get enough B12 if you eat high amounts of mushrooms and seaweeds, say three to four times a week? You know, I don't, I don't think so. I think um, it really, you need to have the source is bacteria that live in the soil. And so I suppose that if your the soil that the mushrooms are grown in is high in B12 and the mushrooms aren't cleaned too much, which I don't, wouldn't necessarily recommend not cleaning your mushrooms really well, um, then maybe you would get enough. Um, but I just think that in order to make sure that you get enough, I think it's important to take a supplement. Thank you. A is question, oh, sorry. Is, uh, Barbara says, is tofu anti-inflammatory? 
You know, I wouldn't, I, I think all plant foods are probably anti-inflammatory. Um, so tofu, I don't know specifically that that would be something that I would say you want to eat tofu or an anti-inflammatory food. I would say um, my blanket recommendation is to eat whole foods, you know, that are made out of plants. So any whole food plants uh, is, is the best bet for anti-inflammatory. Melissa says, what bakery do you use in Salt Lake City that has vegan options? So I'm guessing that my husband is talking about passion flower. There's a bakery. Um, it's a woman who trained in France. And so she makes vegan cakes and things like that. They're definitely not health food. It's, you know, they, they've got uh, vegan butter and oil and all that kind of stuff in it. So uh, if that's something um, that you'd want to do, that would have to be a rare, rare treat. Terrific. So there's a question. What is your favorite documentary, nutrition documentary? So whenever I talk to patients about, um, you know, changing their diets to vegan or plant-based, I always recommend that they watch Forks Over Knives. I think that one is kind of the original. That has a lot of really good information. Um, that would be probably the number one that I would recommend first. And I think it just left Netflix just recently. It had been on there for yeah. so many years. Yeah, that's, it's too bad because it's, it, it's a good recommendation because most people have Netflix. Right. You know, it's really hard being in my position because you're never going to make everybody happy because we got another super chat donation from Tom. Thank you so much. And some people are saying ring the bell. So I'll ring it gently. Thank you, Tom, so much. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, you know, are there a lot of plant eaters in Salt City, Salt Lake City? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a very big vegan community. I think we're starting to get more people who are more whole food plant based vegans. Um, but we do have a lot of vegan restaurants, um, that I wouldn't say are very healthy. Um, but, uh, but there is a very large vegan community, which is amazing because there are a lot of activists here and people who really care about animals and care about the environment. Um, in addition to people who care about the health aspects of eating this way too. So, uh, so it's really exciting to be part of a big community where there are a lot of people that care. In fact, on the 30th of this month, I'm supposed to be helping out with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM. And they're doing um, like a peaceful protest to help get workers out of meat plants because of the risks to those people uh, for the coronavirus. So um, I'm hoping that that's going to be happening on the 30th, where they're getting medical professionals to speak out against, against that. Are you, uh, are you a TV family or a no TV family? So we have TV, uh, we don't have cable, um, but we will watch, um, you know, we have Netflix and things like that. What, what do you watch? So, um, you know, one of the things that we have really enjoyed watching uh, lately is, so we have Disney Plus and on there they've got a lot of documentaries about animals, which is a lot of fun for Augie because they have some where it's very interactive. It's where they give the animals names and they follow their stories. So they have one about elephants and they have one about dolphins. And so that's been a lot of fun uh, for Augie to watch. Yeah, Dr. Anthony Lim, who was recently a guest, mentioned how great that channel was. And what I saw in it was so cute. Maybe if you haven't seen it, Augie would like it. It's it's Lady and the Tramp, but it's a, it's a live action version instead of a cartoon. It was wonderful. Oh, yeah, we'll have to check that out. Really good. Jennifer wants to know, have you ever tried making your own oat milk? We have. Yeah. So we did that. Uh, it was probably a couple of months now that we tried to do that. And I think we're going to have to try it again. Um, I think we squeezed it too much out of the milk bag and it got a little bit too goopy. So it was almost like too thick and kind of stringy. So we're just going to have to give it a go again. Now that I'm done with residency and not working 80 hours a week, I actually have time to try stuff like that. I'm excited. Nice. Karen says there are so many scan pan options like the fry pan, the skillet. What's the difference and which one do you have and recommend? So Jonathan, you know about, so I guess there are, I think there are two different um, there's, kinds. There's three different, there's so. Uh, you wanna come tell them? I, I don't know the difference, like the distinct differences between them, but we just bought the, we got the higher end ones. So I think that they have some that are 
more expensive, some of it are less expensive. Um, we went with the more expensive ones because I think, if I remember right, they can withstand a higher heat. Well, the, and whoever's going to look at them should, um, like some of them are designed for either electric or gas, and there's some that are that can do both. So you definitely want to decide which one, like whatever you're cooking on to get the right pan for it. I think that is one of the distinct factors. Nice. Okay. I'm doing it very gingerly. Thank you again, Tom, for doing another super chat. A lot of people are saying they like this feature. Here's a very fun question. Oh, well, first, uh, Diane wants to know if you have a cookbook, Dr. Davis. Oh, no, I do not have a cookbook, no. Um, but I'll tell you, one of my favorite cookbooks is The Straight Up Food by Kathy Fisher. I think that's a great one. It's uh, SOS, so salt, oil, sugar-free, and... Uh, I really like a lot of those recipes in there. So I use that one a lot. Um, you know, I really like the Forks Over Knives magazines. So they've got a lot of fun recipes in there that, that we will use. But no, I don't have a, I don't have a cookbook. Okay. Uh, so uh, Tom, I, I apologize if you, I didn't see your question because it wasn't in the same line as the super chat, but I'm seeing it now. Uh, Dealing with iron deficiency anemia, ferritin level seven, colonoscopy, endoscopy, negative for any bleeding. I feel fine. Energy is good. Eat loads of beans, greens, and nuts and seeds. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, that's, unfortunately, that's um, more of a workup than I could do, you know, right now. Um, it sounds like you've already done the first thing, which is to make sure, you know, doing a colonoscopy and endoscopy and making sure that those are normal. And then, you know, it's really looking at, are you bleeding from somewhere that you're not aware of that isn't, you know, it isn't something that's been looked at already. Um, or is your body breaking down blood cells somehow? And I don't know if that's been looked at, if they've looked at your blood under a microscope to kind of see what your blood looks like. Um, but really to make sure you get enough iron, you know, you, you're doing the right thing. So doing the, the greens and the beans and things like that is, is the way to go to get um, good iron. Great. Samantha says, Chef AJ, I need a, you need a stand that you can hold your bell so that you can ring it with a chain. Maybe somebody can make that for you. But in the meantime, living well with Stacy Heine says, Chef AJ, thank you so much for your dedication to this incredibly important movement. You're saving lives with your platform. I really appreciate it. Here's a really fun question. And I apologize that sometimes it takes me a while to see it because what I see goes very, very quickly, but it's about what you eat for a special, uh, here it is from Marjorie. What is your menu if you're having a special celebratory or celebratory meal? Uh, let's see. So what would that be? What do you think? We're celebrating. Oh, sorry. He's got a mouthful of food. Um, you know, it's hard because I think that the foods that we eat every day are kind of our favorite foods anyway. So I don't know that I would change it too much. Um, you know, we just really like what we eat. So I would say, you know, just keeping it really simple with, you know, making potatoes and, and veggies. That's, that's kind of what we like to do. And, you know, every so often, if we want to make something a little bit sweet, uh, Kathy Fisher's got some good recipes um, that we've used, like her, um, it's a poppy seed lemon cake that's really good. Uh, Augie loves watermelon, just fresh cut watermelon. So yeah, so I think uh, we just kind of make, you know, what it is that we love all the time. So we just cut, try to keep it pretty simple. Well, that makes sense because they always say what you eat today, you crave tomorrow. So if you eat healthy food today, you're going to want it tomorrow. Okay, so this is a, more of a general medical question. Shane says, can you talk about why someone's white blood count would be a little lower than normal eating this way? Well, you know, your white blood cell count is, um, is kind of a marker for inflammation in the body, usually if you have some sort of an infection or thing, something like that. So if you've noticed that that has gone down since you started eating this way, um, you know, I mean, it could be for a number of things. I mean, if you have an infection when it's being checked, it could be a little bit higher. And then if you get over that, you know, it could be lower. Um, certainly eating this way does, you know, promote um, an anti-inflammatory body. So, um, you know, that could be part of it too. 
Um, but I think it's, it kind of goes up and down. And so having it go down or up a little bit that isn't a huge, um, huge deal. You kind of have to see what it looks like um, as far as a trend. All right, terrific. So let's see, uh, see if I have any more questions. What is her website, LM? I, I just posted it is her name, Dr. Dick, Nikki Davis. Jessica says, please stop the bell. We don't need to know when someone donates to you. It's, it's distracting. The problem is you don't understand that that is, they get their question asked. So I don't know how I'm gonna solve this problem because I can't ignore them either. So if anybody has a great solution to this, let me know. <laughs> Because you know what, you're never going to please everybody. So, all right. Well, this is, let's see if I can find any more questions. Okay. Yeah, life is too short to complain about a cowbell. That's really good, especially during a <laughs> pandemic. So, yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. Well, Don't this we is more cowbell. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is it's not just the cowbell, it's purple. I mean, you know, That's the so fact beautiful. that it's purple, Julie loves the bell. Well, that just shows, you know, different strokes for different folks. So, uh, Mary says some soaps just say thank you for the super chat, but okay. So you mean just say it, but, but see that person is saying, don't even acknowledge it. So there's a way to acknowledge it without the bell. So, well, I'll put a poll, I'll put a poll on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, I would love for you to, because I'm almost at a hundred thousand and that would mean a lot to me. Uh, last question from Romelia. What do you think about apple cider vinegar? Yeah, I think um, definitely can be something that you can use um, to improve your health. Uh, Dr. Gregor has a great uh, video about it. Um, and I, I believe that he recommends, you know, having a little bit of vinegar every day. Uh, I, I think apple cider vinegar is a good choice and, you know, any vinegar really. So, you know, we do a lot of the California balsamic vinegars. Uh, we really enjoy those. Oh, and AJ, I forgot I was gonna tell you that I've tried that new Italian one. And it is amazing. I, so he sent me a, a, a tester of that one. And I think I'm definitely going to buy some of that. So it was really good. But with the apple cider vinegar, I'd say um, if you want to get more information, he's, uh, Dr. Gregor has a really good review of that um, and the health benefits. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. I, so I'll, I'll be doing a recipe video with that. It, it's just great. as straight up salad dressing too. Every time we have it, we, we say this has to have sugar. This has to have oil. Yeah. This has to have salt because he's using the spices from local spicery that are just really top notch. So that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was a lot of fun watching your family, how they eat together and cook together. And it's, it's just so inspiring to see a family that really is healthy. So many people say, I can't get my kids to eat healthy food. So I think Augie does need to start a little channel because he's seven and he eats healthier than most adults I know. Yeah, I think he would love that. Would you love to teach other yeah. kids? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much to the Davis family. And guys, check out Dr. Davis's website. It's her name. I've been posting it all through the show, drnikkidavis.com. And I guess maybe you have a mailing list or a blog that people can sign up for. Yep. So if you go onto my website, uh, at the bottom of every page, there's a place where you can sign up to, to get updates and things like that. And you'll find out when I'm doing my retreats and, and when those start going again. All right. Thank you guys so much. It's so great seeing you. Thank you, AJ. Thanks for having us. Say my bye. pleasure. And bye. thanks to all of you guys. Oh, bye-bye, Augie. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. when I'll be talking to Danny Taylor. She is a vegan fitness competitor who's won so many awards and did it on a plant-based diet. Take care, Davis family. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.